Performance enhancing drugs aren't limited to just sport and increasing your physical prowess. There are substances that could improve your mind power as well. Things like help you learn faster or improve your memory. Do we face a future where we'll be increasingly brain doping? This first came along with Prozac that um, we suddenly became aware of the notion of what you might call cosmetic psychopharmacology, the idea that you take a drug, not because there's anything wrong with you, but just to make you kind of better than well. There's anecdotal evidence that some students are misusing medications like Ritalin and the stay awake drug Modafinil to improve their mental performance. People who use them become quite uh, psychologically dependent on them, even if they don't consider themselves to be addicted. Um, I think they get to feel that they can't perform without some sort of pharmacological enhancement. Well, I'm going to join a trial to see if there's a pill that will make me a little bit smarter. OK, I'm your guinea pig. What are you going to do to me? OK, so today you're going to take part in our L-DOPA learning study. You'll be lying in a scanner and you'll do a learning task. This won't hurt a bit, right? No, not at all. So I'm just going to take your blood pressure and your heart rate before and after we give you the drug. The L-DOPA will boost the dopamine levels in my brain. And the aim of the trial is to see if that will enhance my language learning ability. The ultimate aim is to try and find a better treatment for aphasia. Come on through, Graham. OK. So this is a condition that people who've had a stroke might be impaired in language production or language comprehension. And what we're trying to find is better treatments. Turn the lights out. First, I have to learn some made-up names for some unfamiliar objects. How are you going, Graham? They're actually ancient Finnish farm tools, so there's not much chance I'll know their real names. Gessad. Divik. Tafel. Next comes the test. You will need the mouse for this one. I have to remember which word describes which object. While all this is going on, my brain is being scanned to see which parts are being activated. If you think about learning new words, there might be a number of ways the drug is working. Um, for instance, increasing your attention, um, changing your mood, um, or something more related to the actual linguistic aspect of what you're doing and your short-term memory. So what we're using the functional neuroimaging for is to tease that apart. When that boost occurs, what is the change that's going on um, in brain activity? We'll come back to the results of the study shortly. Don't get up too quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other researchers are looking at the brain and social behaviour. Could neurochemicals be used to enhance our social interactions? One thing that's come out of that research is this fundamental role of a neuropeptide called oxytocin. And uh, oxytocin is best known perhaps for being the hormone that causes the uterus to contract during childbirth. It's also important for aiding bonding between mother and baby, which is why it's sometimes known as the love hormone. It's now also been shown to play a role in our other relationships and in a number of psychiatric disorders. People that are depressed, for example, tend to have lower levels of oxytocin in their system. Kids with autism seem to be oxytocin deficient as well. And so there's a lot of interest in boosting oxytocin these researchers are developing a synthetic oxytocin-like compound they call SOC1. We give it to a couple of male rats, for example, who are meeting for the first time. And they tend to sniff each other for a few seconds and then retreat to opposite ends of the cage. A bit like a couple of blokes in a bar saying, what are you looking at? But on SOC1, they show quite remarkable increases in sociability and they'll come very close together and uh, almost cuddle each other. It works with females, it works with young rats, old rats. It's uh, really quite a remarkable phenomenon. A drug that works like this makes it a prime candidate for misuse. Chemical love is perhaps not true love. 
And it, it's easy to fall in love with people that you probably shouldn't have fallen in love with if you're in an altered pharmacological state. So there's probably a, a philosophical debate that we need to have about these sort of issues. Getting back to the language learning trials, so far they've tested two drugs, dexamphetamine and L-DOPA. So did either produce a brain boost? So this is the learning effects of our earlier study um, looking at dexamphetamine versus placebo. Yeah. And what we found was over five days, uh, it increased the amount of words that they learnt up to 30%. Okay, so, gee, that's a big increase. Yeah, we were quite surprised by the magnitude of that size. Yeah. The other really interesting thing was when we got these participants back a week and a month later, these enhanced performances were maintained. And what about the drug I was given, okay. L-DOPA? And what we found was, again, there was a significant boost of learning over those five days. But interestingly, we found a different pattern when the people came back. Yeah, so it's just one month later, the people on the placebo are exactly the same as the people who are on L-DOPA. That's right. OK, so these are the fMRI scans. That's right. What we're finding is that in the um, striatum, which is heavily involved in dopamine's actions in the brain, we're seeing increased activities on L-DOPA. We're also seeing increased activities in the hippocampus and these medial temporal regions that are heavily involved in learning. And we're seeing changes in aspects of the temporal cortex where we usually store words and their meanings. So it's kind of making sense. That's right. So these are some of the regions we actually predicted. So do these results prove that drugs can make us smarter? We're looking at something very selective and experimental in terms of the type of learning. So it's not clear how this would relate to other um, real world examples of learning. I think what we have to ask is why do people feel the, the need for a, a magic solution to their fatigue and feelings that they can't cope with the cognitive demands that are placed upon them. Uh, and I think that it's really important to remember that when someone's feeling under strain, there are often important lifestyle factors that they haven't attended to. But in actual fact, taking a substance is more likely to bring further side effects and problems rather than solve their problems. So it seems there are no magical medications that will boost your brain power and have no side effects. But there are demonstrated ways to increase your mind power that don't involve popping pills. There's some really interesting research going on at the moment looking at how, I guess, non-pharmacological therapies can change your brain. Even relatively modest exercise appears to have benefits in terms of your mood, particularly in depression and to a certain extent anxiety. But we can also, using sophisticated brain imaging, we can actually watch the brain change as people suddenly incorporate exercise into their daily routine. So that's quite extraordinary.